Jack shares this, uh, and this is sort of a year in review when it comes to digital rights issues. And Jack shared this, thought it'd be appropriate for today's show, and I agree, it is appropriate for today's show. I like it. So this is from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, I'm a big fan of their organization. They do a lot of great work. The year we thought to get net neutrality back, we fought. We didn't thought. <laughs> the year we fought to get net neutrality back. As I mentioned, I'm a little hungover. This is the 2019 year in review. Ever since the FCC repealed net neutrality protections in 2017, this is from the article, we've been fighting to return as many protections to as, mer to as many Americans as possible. In 2019, the battles in the courts and Congress both kept those committed to a free and open internet very busy. So here's a couple highlights. Mozilla versus the FCC takes center stage. So here's what happened. A bunch of people started suing the FCC uh, for repealing net neutrality. Mozilla really led the charge and other states joined in as well. So here's what happened. The court finally delivered its decision. The decision was ultimately mixed. While the majority of the FCC's order was upheld, the court instructed the agency to hold hearings to address three areas it concluded the FCC has failed to adequately consider, public safety, poll attachment rights, and subsidy program lifeline. In good news for advocates of a free and open internet, the court also unequivocally rejected the FCC's attempt to preempt ban state net neutrality laws. The court didn't mince words on preemption, stating that the commission ignored binding precedent by failing to ground its sweeping preemption directive. Okay, in short, they said that the repeal of net neutrality stands. They said they were fine to repeal net neutrality, although there's a couple issues they didn't look at that they need to provide further information on. The other thing they ruled on was, but states can totally have their own net neutrality laws. There's nothing preventing states because they wanted to make sure, the FCC wanted to say states can't make their own net neutrality laws. The court said, oh no, yes they can. States can make their own net neutrality laws. All right. Here's another thing that happened. The House passes the Save the Internet Act, leaving net neutrality in the hands of the Senate. The Save the Internet Act would make the protections of the 2015 Open Internet Order permanent. Um, in April, the Save the Internet Act passed the House of Representatives by a vote of 232 to 190, leaving it up to the Senate to follow suit. So the Senate refuses to vote on it. Mitch McConnell is sitting on it, and uh, he had the help of pretty much all of the Republicans, well, all the Republicans, and then Kristen Sinema uh, was among the dissenting Democrats who went against net neutrality. But um, but here's the thing. They also wouldn't force the vote because now they didn't have to have Trump veto it. So that was, during this whole impeachment effort, this was one of the many, many gifts they gave to Trump. They gave Trump a lot of gifts while this was going on. They gave him a new NAFTA, which is just as bad as the old NAFTA. They gave him uh, a Pentagon budget that was billions more than what he even asked for. Uh, they gave him... 750,000 people don't have food stamps now from, from a, an order Republicans want it. Uh, let's see, what else did they give him? Oh, and they did this. It's the other thing we'll mention. They stopped a net neutrality. Uh, they stopped net neutrality in the Senate so that he didn't have to veto it. All right. So those are some of the big things that happened. The House passes the Save the Internet Act. Now, again, the Save the Internet Act is literally a three-page bill that just basically says, hey, that stuff we did in 2015 where we got net neutrality officially on the books, we're going back to that. Keep in mind, we've had net neutrality since the advent of the internet. We just got it solid on the books in law and not just this sort of written thing that we expected people to follow but couldn't actually enforce it. We got it as a solid law uh, via an FCC designation in 2015. Then that got repealed in 2017. So this has been a, a long, hard-fought year for net neutrality. And uh, yeah, as this article says, people committed to a free and open internet have been kept very busy this year. And uh, shout out to all my colleagues at Fight for the Future. We did the epic live stream for net neutrality in June. We stormed Mitch McConnell's office with 3.5 million petitions for net neutrality. That was Fight for the Future, Demand Progress, uh, the Hispanic Media Coalition, uh, Free Press. Uh, yeah. It was a great time. It was a great time. But uh, 2019 was a busy year for digital rights activists, and 2020 is going to be as well. All right. So thank you for sharing that with me, Jack. I appreciate it very much. Get your news on with Ron
Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your 